Hey everyone, and thanks for stopping by to check out this video. I wanted to get online and kind of discuss the uh, the recent YouTube changes um, based on the um, Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, and kind of you know hopefully start a dialogue um, between creators uh, and channels like ours. We are pretty exclusively only diecast related videos. Um, we've never done a video that wasn't or that isn't diecast related. At the end of the day, those are those are toys and it's going to be pretty hard for us to um, to get around that fact. So for those of you who don't know, YouTube lost a pretty major lawsuit, um, including $170 million. Um, it was a uh, Children's Online Privacy Protection Act case, uh, and so it's forcing YouTube to make some changes um, to protect uh, to protect YouTube. Um, I can go into some of the details. There is an article that was published by Google um, and the name of the article is Upcoming Changes to Kids Content on YouTube.com. Um, I will stick a link in the description. I'm going to encourage everyone to go take a look at that. Um, and what, what, uh, what brought this up is we're pretty active on Instagram and uh, I noticed that Faster the Dragster um, what ha had a post up about removing all of their YouTube content. And I thought, well, that's not good. Um, something must be going on because when you have a, a you know, a, in our community, in the diecast community, that's their staple. That's not one you want to see leaving um, and taking their content down. So I, I thought, well, that's must be something pretty major. So I started to look into it and I realized that this uh, this loss in court is forcing YouTube to make some changes. I mean, I'll kind of read through, um, I'll kind of read through some of the points in this article. Um, this is from the article. In the coming months, here's what's changing. Bullet point one. You will be required to tell us if your content is made for kids. In addition, we'll use uh, machine learning to help us identify videos that clearly target young audiences. At a high level, content that is made for kids has an emphasis on, and they list five things, children or children's characters, popular children's programming or animated characters, play acting or stories using toys, child protagonists engaging in common natural play patterns such as play acting or imaginative play, and finally popular children's songs, stories, or poems. So <clears throat> We're a channel devoted to diecast toy cars. My kids are part of most of our videos. They're in most of our videos. Uh, even even the ones they're not in, they're behind the scenes helping me um, mo in, in most of our videos. Uh, it's pretty clear to me that our content, although intended for all audiences, is going to have to be marked as for kids. Even in our hunting videos, which don't involve my kids at all, they don't help with any bar, any bit of that. And really, if I were to guess who the target audience is on that, who who are the ones watching those videos, that's going to be largely adults. We're hunting collectibles, adult collectibles, even though uh, at the end of the day, they're, they're still toys. Um, so, um, you know, the way that is written, it sounds like to me that we're going to have to mark all of our videos as for kids. Um, it's going to be hard for a channel like ours to say we're not a kid's channel and that our content and videos are not for kids. Um, furthermore, we do want kids to watch our content. I'm not going to be dishonest about that. 
you know, that, you know, that's, we want to, we want to, you know, the, a community involves everyone, adults, kids, it doesn't matter to us. We want adults and kids. Um, now, I should say that we're almost at a thousand subscribers, um, but we're not really near the 4,000 watch hours. So even though we're close on the subscriber side, it's not likely that we're going to be monetized anytime soon. Um, but our goal as a channel, obviously, is to become monetized someday. You know, we, we have a lot of, of uh, improvements to do in our content. We realize that. We're just happy to be growing and improving with each video right now. So, you know, that, and that to me, that's the biggest, that's the thing that's got everyone up in arms. Um, the fact that, well, I should say the change that's actually got everyone up in arms is that there are going to be no more personalized ads uh, for content marked or deemed as for kids. Um, that means that. Uh, advertisers are not going to be allowed to pull data on the watchers of your videos and uh, and therefore increasing their risk uh, if they, you know, for running an ad on your channel. Um, so in other words, you know, it's going to de de-incentivize um, the advertisers from placing ads on kids' content because they're not going to be able to, you know, drill down and determine who they're actual, who they're trying to reach with their ads. Now, it sounds like they are still allowing ads, just not. Once we started doing this, once we started creating our videos, we click, quickly learned that there's a huge community out there and look that's very appealing to us so I'm not I don't understand why on children's content or kids content you need to remove likes and comments and notifications I mean we have friends that we communicate exclusively through YouTube <laughs> you know you know the, the Community means something to us. You know, we want to we want to share content. Obviously, we want to share the fun that we have, um, but we also want to connect. I mean, it, for some of us, that is more valuable than any type of monetization. I mean, I'd be lying if we if we if I said that you know the monetization isn't a factor. But I have people, I've met people on YouTube that are my friends now. And removing the likes and comments and notifications, that, that's just, that's just upsetting because they make this, they, we have common interest. I want to see their videos. I want to comment on their videos. I want to support their channels. So at the end of the day, you know, we're going to we're going to continue to make our content and largely because we want to stay involved with the community that we've, you know, devoted so much time and energy to. So my questions, you know, and I, look, these are really just for who you know, the watchers of this video. I don't have any delusions about YouTube answering any of these and they're not tongue in cheek. I really am kind of curious to know the answers. Um, to the to my questions, and the first one is for partner channels. Supposing they do everything right and stay on the platform, will YouTube lose money by making these changes? I have a hard time believing that this will affect their bottom line dramatically, but it seems like it definitely will affect the bottom line of the creators. For channels with mixed audiences, what is the content creator's legal obligation? If you look at the article, there's a part in the article 
or a part in the in the uh, in the memo where under the heading preparing for these changes it says understand copa and your legal responsibilities as a creator you can learn more about copa here and there's a link to the um, to the copa uh, act you need to consider your applicable legal obligations when evaluating whether your content may may be made for kids including how the age of a child is defined in your country consult legal counsel if you have additional questions so my question is for channels with mixed audiences what is the content what are the content creators legal obligations it, it seems to me like the legal problems stem from data ga gathering which many of us are not doing i'm not gathering any data maybe your channel is i don't know and i realize we'll be risking our channels by not marking them correctly and I, we plan on marking our content as for kids it, it but it does hurt that we may be risking losing our comments likes and notifications i don't understand that but anyway in your in the article it says that we need to understand our legal responsibilities as creators and i just don't really understand what we did wrong <laughs> to be honest if if someone watches you know if a child has uh, a, a, the a, the device of a parent of a parent and watches 19 episodes of Ryan toy review and then the next day the parent has the device back and watches an instructional video will that instructional video be at risk of being flagged as a kid's video I mean that seems to me like I mean when I when I read machine learning I work in technology when I read that you know I, machine learning is automation it, you know it, it's hard to get automation to see the gray areas and I, it, it's a it's a concern Maybe that's all, maybe, maybe YouTube has already thought of all that. I don't know. What if a, you know, what if the channel makes toy videos for adults? You know, what if the channel, the intended audience of the channel is only intended for adults? What if the content is only intended for adults? Can't kids just be restricted from accessing those, those videos? I mean, if the creator says this content is for adults, and you and your learn and your machine learning has told you this user is a child. Can't they just be restricted from using that data? Furthermore, can the user can the end users can they tell YouTube whether or not they're going to let their children watch YouTube freely? I mean, how much, how much of the responsibility should be the parents? And that's really my last question. Why is YouTube liable or responsible for unmonitored children? That seems to be backwards to me. Anyway, you know, let me know your thoughts. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm, I'm curious to hear you know, your thoughts and input on this. You know, if this is the first you're hearing about it, I'm, I am, uh, I'm sorry. I'm hoping that I, that I don't scare you away from the platform. That's not my intention. Um, I think YouTube can probably do better. Um, but like I said, we're not moving off of the channel because look, if they have to be compliant to, uh, to, to COPA, so does every other channel. It's just a matter of time you know, every other uh, platform. So it's not like moving to a different platform is gonna solve the problem. At least I don't believe it will. I'm just because I think, you know, if a bunch of creators move to a different platform, 
you know, the, the legal gaze will move as well. So anyway, I'm a, I hope I wasn't too much of a bummer here. Uh, I'm, you know, it is a concerning thing. And so I want to make sure that we're informed. I want to do my best to get a conversation going in our little world, in our little diecast world. Um, you know, many of us are not monetized. So this, you know, this doesn't affect a lot of us today. <laughs> but, you know, maybe some of us have those goals of maybe one day being a channel that can, you know, that can, you know, spend the type of time and energy it takes to produce content and make a profit from that. You know, I'm not asking for anything today. I'm just really trying to understand what all of this means. So please, if you if you can, just comment below. Let let us know your thoughts. Maybe we can get a conversation started, and you know, if we can all learn more about this together, I think I think it's probably a good thing. Anyway, I really appreciate you stopping by and checking out this video. And, uh, you know, feel free to comment away and I'll do my best to respond to, to everything with, uh, with my best understanding. Thank you again.